Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, it's not just young people who forget you have a Bible study. Just two weeks ago, we had a 58-year-old guy. When we knocked on his door, he opened the door. He goes, it's Friday? Yep, it's Friday. We had to reschedule his Bible study also. The church we started in Two Rivers was started with Bible studies. Can you grow a church with Bible studies? Yes, you can grow a church with Bible studies. My wife and I were one with Bible study. Uh, 20, uh, 36 years ago, we were one with a Bible study. We had three daughter churches. All were grown with Bible studies. We worked overseas. We won people with Bible studies. You can grow a church with Bible studies. However, they don't always go the way you want them to go. And uh, some of the people you'll get in through a Bible study, you may only get them in on a global level. And there may be people you'll get in through a Bible study on your local church level. And others, you may not get them to come into church at all, but you keep teaching them that Bible study and make them a better Catholic or a better Lutheran or whatever you can do until you can finally get through them. As long as they'll let you keep teaching, you keep teaching that Bible study on whatever ever level you can. Let me explain these levels quickly. We had a, a young lady come and join us one time. She was a college student, an exchange student from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. Her name was Natasha Badavuk. And Natasha came into our Bible study. She brought her boyfriend. He was an exchange student also from Lima, Peru. His name was Alejandro Banmazan. And uh, when we got them married, it was an international thing. And uh, they sat through a Bible study, and Natasha, on her first Bible study, she fell down under the power of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Her boyfriend thought that we had hurt her, that something was wrong with her. And, uh, but she says, no, 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 she says, Alejandro, she says, this is God. And she got a hold of Jesus that day. We baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. We got them married in the name of Jesus. And then they moved to Texas. Where they met up with somebody you might know, David Bernard. And Alejandro translated one of David Bernard's books. And then they moved down to Laredo, Texas. And uh, we were down for uh, Christmas for Christ training seminar, and they found out we were there. So they came to the training seminar where we were at. We were home missionaries at the time, and uh, they brought a friend of theirs who was also an exchange student. Her name was uh, uh, Naoko. Naoko was from Okinawa. So they brought her along. She was a Buddhist person. She told us this. She says, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Buddhist person. We did a quick Bible study with her in the foyer of the church in San Antonio, Texas. We brought her to the altar. She prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She wasn't certain what it all was. We went and bought her a Bible in the, in the gift shop at the church there that they had. And we told her, we gave her the name of the missionary. We said, when you get to Okinawa, she was heading to Okinawa the next day. When you get to Okinawa, I tell you, Naoko, find the missionary, and we sent her on her way. She got to San Francisco. She's sitting in the airport reading her Bible. This all started with a Bible study with Natasha. She's reading her Bible. A guy sits down next to her. He says, do you know what you're reading? She goes, I don't know. I'm a Buddhist person, but I got something called the Holy Ghost last night. He said, I know a little bit about the Holy Ghost. And she says, uh, can you tell me a little bit about it? And, and they got to talking, and she says, here's the name of a church I'm supposed to go to in Okinawa. Do you know where it is? He goes, absolutely. He says, I pastor it. I'm the missionary there. Naoko went back there. She became a Sunday school teacher in Okinawa. Three of her brothers are now pastoring churches in Okinawa. Over 30 members of her family are now in the church, and they are teaching Bible studies. you got to know that a Bible study is going to touch somebody, even if it's not on the local level. It may reach out on the global level. You just keep teaching that Bible study. And then there are those that will happen on the local level. 
always take every opportunity. We had a situation in our neighborhood. This lady was all messed up. She lived next door to us. Well, long story short, her boyfriend dragged her down the street at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, we could have do one or two things. We could have called the police and had them deal with it, or we could put on our clothes and run out in the street and go get her. We put on our clothes, went out in the street, and went and got her. We brought her in, and we started tending to her roots. She was very hurt. She, she had a lot going on. And she's like, why are you helping me? I says, because Jesus loves you. We love you. And there's a greater purpose for your life than living like this. And she goes, I can't believe you're here doing this, taking care of me. And I says, that's because we love you again. And I kept iterating that, that relational relationship. You build it on every opportunity. Long story short, we started a church in our house. She started coming. We're teaching her a Bible study, her children a Bible study. And today, she's in the church. Her husband's in the church. Her daughter's in the church. Her son-in-law's in the church. And their grandchildren are in the church. And then you may get a Bible study that you will be teaching, and you'll be wondering if they're going to be getting it. Brother Hanthorne, I know you've had these. Brother Booker, you've had them. You guys have had them. You've all had them. The Bible study, the unending Bible study. <laughs> and we taught a Bible study to a couple named Dave and Vicki. They were our best friends before we got into the church, and I think that was probably the problem. They didn't think that we knew anything. So we kept teaching Bible studies. And after 24 Bible studies of exploring God's Word, I know it's 12 sessions, but we taught at 24 lessons, and we said as we were driving over there on the 24th lesson, we said, tonight's the last night. They're not coming to church. We're not doing it. We're, we're, this is it. If they're not going to make a commitment, this is wrong thinking, just so you know. <laughs> but we said, we're not doing it. And so we went over there, and when we got there, they had a friend sitting there. Her name was Holly. And Holly was sitting there, and they said, hey, is it all right if our friend Holly sits in on this? And we're like, yeah, Holly can sit in on this. And, and Holly, as we started the Bible study, she started crying from the moment we started teaching it till we said the last amen. She cried through the whole thing. She ended up praying through the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost that night. Dave and Vicki never got the Holy Ghost. Dave and Vicki are not in the church today. But Holly's in the church today. We found out from Holly that she was that night. Her husband had left her. Her kids didn't want nothing to do with her. And she was going to commit suicide. She had lost everything. She had given up and she talked to her friend Vicki. And Vicki said, hey, why don't you just come and join us for Bible study? So she joined us for Bible study. Now today, Holly is in the church in Michigan. She is married. She is happy. She is thrilled. God is doing great things in her life. You never know when that Bible study may bear fruit. So as long as you, they'll let you keep coming in and teach the Bible study, you keep coming in and you teach the Bible study. These are just three stories about the Bible studies that God has given us opportunity to do over 36 years. Do Bible studies work? Yes. I am a living testament. My wife is a living testament that Bible studies work. Do Bible studies really work? Well, in the time period that my wife and I have been teaching Bible studies, we have baptized nearly 500 people in the name of Jesus Christ because of Bible studies. Both here in the United States and on the foreign field. Do Bible studies have a way of reaching somebody? Yes, they do. God bless you.